So tonight we have a, um, a treat for you. Jim Swinnon's agreed to come up and talk about the woman that the Clark Prize is named after. She was one of the most inspiring, forward-thinking women of her generation. Jim, come on up. Um, in addition to being on the board of the Joan Irvine Smith Athlete R. Clark Foundation, he's also the president of the Irvine Museum, and he's also a member of the advisory board of the UCI School of, of Law. Jim, it's good to have you here. Thank you for coming. So it's just be down there. Thank you, Jeff. Um, it's really great to be here. And today, when I was at the conference, I kind of hid out in the back and um, observed, and I thought it was really wonderful with what took place. There was an incredible amount of energy. The talks were all excellent. And I thought that um, your interaction is what this is all about. And even more so was the reception right out here. I thought that was really wonderful too. Matter of fact, the buzz was so loud at one point I just had to walk in and get a little quiet, get my thoughts. <laughs> but um, this is what we want to do. We want to have the, in, the connectivity between all of the interesting people and the people who have the, um, the knowledge and, and the foresights and the, and the ability to get this um, really um, precious resource that we're all entitled to and also that we have a responsibility to to be able to preserve it and have it be available for all of, our, all of us and also for generations. But I thought this evening, and excuse me, can we close the doors please? So I'm not competing. Um, I thought this evening that we would actually introduce you to the woman who this prize is named after. And that was our grandmother. And this was a woman who during her years did an incredible number of things. And so I'm going to just do a short little um, photo um, tour of her life. She was born in 1903 in Los Angeles. And her parents, George Richardson and Cora Richardson, um, George was a doctor. He actually was the house doctor at the Huntington Hotel in Pasadena. And my grandmother used to say, that um, she would um, visit with him when he was doing his tours, and he had other. He also saw outside patients, and she would go in the buggy. And one of her first dreams actually was to be a nurse, and this resonates throughout her life. Um, even though she never became one, she actually um, was responsible for uh, founding a number of nursing schools and also being um, a part of a number of different research um, institutions. But um, this is a picture of them in the Arroyo, where the Rose Bowl is played now. This is her at nine months, and was used as a picture on the family Christmas card. A little bit later, they went in and they moved to the West Adams area, which is now we know as SC. And so this is um, she and her um, sister Jean. This is Jean, our grandmother, and her mother. I want you to look at the curls that she has. This is gonna play an important part in the development of another individual of our family. <laughs> this is her on Venice Beach, being the bathing beauty. And this is her when she actually um, decided she would would maybe switch a little bit from nursing and decided that she was thinking about becoming an artist. And so she applied to the Chouinard School in Los Angeles. She um, brought her portfolio, did her interview, and at the end of the interview, they hired her as a teacher. One of the great students that she had was Irene. Irene was one of the major um, fashion designers for the movie industries in Los Angeles. This is when she met um, uh, my grandfather. No gene pool here at all. <laughs> when she met him, he, had a, he actually had a movie magazine called Cinderlanda. And Cinderlanda was an important 
outreach to the South American countries to get the um, movie industry's presence and also to um, bridge the gap between North America and South America. And so this is one of her um, covers that she did. This is her wedding day. And on her wedding day, just before her father walked her down the hall, he said something that resonated with her for the rest of her life. Because this was an individual who came from moderate means that was marrying into one of the prominent families in Southern California. And he said, Athlete, there will be a great change in your life. Don't let it change you. If you always remain the same, someday you can be the channel through which good will flow. And during her life, that was exactly the case. This is on their honeymoon in Hawaii. In those days, your honeymoon lasted about three months. <laughs> you had to get there to begin with. So you took the Laura Lee, the steamship, and this is actually at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Waikiki. That was one of the only structures of that day. She told me a great story. She went to all the islands, and when she was on the big island, they went to the volcano house. And when they were at the volcano house, there wasn't room for the chauffeur. So the chauffeur was sent back to Hilo, which is about an hour and a half away. Well, that night that they arrived was the night that in uh, 1929, the eruption took place. <laughs> so they had no place to go, no way to get out, so they stood on the edge of the cr crater and watched the uh, eruption. She fell in love with Hawaii. She visited the Baldwins. The Baldwins were actually great friends of my great-grandfather's. For those of you who live in Orange County, um, you'll know that at one point in time, the Irvine Ranch wouldn't sell you property. They'd only lease it to you. And the reason that actually idea came from the Baldwins, because the Baldwin family only leased land too. <laughs> she also visited Kauai, where later in life she had one of the top botanical gardens. But it was at the time she was at the ranch that I think she really developed her um, love for the land. And this is the pony cart, and um, she and um, our grandfather, um, right outside the, um, the gates of the palms that led up to the main house. And it was during this time that the ranch was developing the irrigation that took place and created it into one of the um, really major agricultural producers in the country. The Irvine Ranch at one point was the largest producer of lima beans in the world. Now, I personally don't like lima beans. <laughs> Maybe I had too many as a child. But it was the first cash crop for California. It was the first time you didn't have to barter. You actually got paid. It was a time when Irvine Lake was developed. Over a thousand wells were drilled on the ranch for water. It was, and so she experienced all this. It was also, for those of you who are a little geeky in nature, she was, um, when Michelson was developing his experiment on the speed of light and wanting to be able to calibrate it, he needed a mile long strip of land. And my grandfather gave that to him on the ranch. And when they perfected it, they invited a number of dignitaries to come, and of course they had invited um, both my grandfather and my grandmother. Well, she was the only woman who was present at the time. So she is actually the first person to witness the, and look through the tube and see the experiment. This is down at the family cove. Um, not quite the bikinis we know today. <laughs> For those of you with really good eyes, if you look on um, our grandfather's shorts, you can see the Athletic Club of, of Los Angeles. Then in 1933, there was a major happening, <laughs> the birth of our mother. But there was also an issue, and what happened was that my, our grandfather had contracted tuberculosis as a child and he was getting quite sick. And so this is the last photograph my grandmother has of her holding her child before she went to take care of her husband 
for the year and a half before he died. And my, my mother was left with her grandparents because the two of them could not be in the same, um, in the same residence. So later after our grandfather died, they moved into Beverly Hills. She was a single mom. Um, at this point in time, it was quite difficult because um, my great grandfather had actually remarried and the only person he'd allow down on the ranch was my mother, not my grandmother. And so my mother would be sent down. And remember those curls we saw earlier? Well, you see them on my mother right now. My mother hated those curls. <laughs> If you want a definitive description of my mother, it's the movie, Fried Green Tomatoes. Anybody see that movie? She's Izzy, hands down. <laughs> but it was also at this time that she started acquiring property. She acquired a property in Visalia, um, when it actually had the dubious distinction of being right across from the work camp that Steinbeck wrote his novel about but it had a great cotton allotment. She also bought a piece of property at this time in the San Fernando Valley, which my great-grandfather thought she was a total idiot to buy. It later became the cornerstone of the Northridge Shopping Center. <laughs> well, my mother used to go down to the ranch and visit her grandfather. And once down there, she came with one of the ranch hands they were riding and they came across a coyote that had been caught in barbed wire. Well, the mother was dead, but there was a pup. And so the ranch hand put the pup in the saddlebag and brought it back, and for whatever reason, my mother persuaded uh, my great-grandfather to allow her to take it back to Beverly Hills. So this is Buster, probably one of the first coyotes in Beverly Hills since ancient times. <laughs> My mother was quite chagrined because the next day she was sent off to school and my grandmother got to stay home and play with the coyote. <laughs> Unfortunately, there were only women in the house and Buster had an issue with men. And so when the family went down to the um, um, family cove for the summer, when they came back, Buster was gone. She continued the magazine after her husband had passed away. This is her giving the Pan American Award to Betty Davis. Uh, you can read the rest of the names in the, it's a who's who of Hollywood. Then during the war, she um, re-met Judge Thurman Clark. They knew one another in high school. Actually, I'm not sure that's quite true. I think the judge was a little bit older than she was. The judge actually was um, quite the man. He, was, he held the 440 state championship. And he ran it in Carpinteria on a race, horse race track. It was one long straight race. Very dapper, and they married towards the end of the war. He actually ended up being one of the great influences um, on my grandmother and what would later take place with the, um, we, we will call it kind of differences that our family had with the Irvine Company. And being a federal judge, she knew quite a bit about the law. It was about this time that she began to begin interested in politics. And one of the great friends of hers was Margaret Brock. Margaret Brock was Mrs. Republican in Los Angeles at the time. So she persuaded my grandmother to go and sell some tickets to a fundraising. My grandmother had a real difficulty doing this. She didn't know how she was going to ask anybody. She didn't mind paying her ticket, but how was she going to ask her friends to actually pony up? And so after several weeks of really being, I'm sweating over this and worrying about how this would take place, she actually sold her 10 tickets. She came back to the committee meeting, she presented them to Margaret, she was so relieved, and Margaret said, Ashley, you did such a great job, here's another 10. <laughs> she worked on Eisenhower's campaign, she was an alternate and a delegate on four separate occasions to the conventions. It was about this time also she was appointed to um, the State Agricultural Board, which she served on for eight years. This is um, my mother and our grandmother, and this is over by where the old ranch house was. And this was at the time that they both were working on starting the University of California, Irvine. Obviously, a lot of people participated in this, in making this happen, but it really was my mother and my grandmother who were the driving forces behind the establishment of the university. 
She was also the establishment of the city of Irvine. The city of Irvine under William Pereira was the second master plan community in the United States. This is the dedication of the university. Um, President Johnson actually came out to um, do it. I think he was looking for boats. He wasn't gonna get very many in Orange County. <laughs> She was close friends with Ronald Reagan. She worked on his campaign. She was close friends also with President Nixon. He actually wrote his second inaugural um, acceptance speech at her home in Corona Del Mar. A number of years later after he was out of office and she was quite chagrined about the handling of what took place, we won't go there. <laughs> but she, um, she stayed as a steadfast friend. I was in New York visiting her and we were having a couple days of um, time together and we'd gone to a number of plays and things and she came and said, well, what would you like to do tonight? And being dutiful, I said, of course, whatever you'd like to do. And she said, well, let's have dinner with the president. I said, excuse me? And she says, yeah, I think, I think he's in town. So she w went back to her room, made the phone call, came back in and said, take a shower, put on a suit, we're having dinner. So we went over and we had a, Quite an interesting dinner. It was just um, Pat was not feeling well, and he had he, he invited Ed, Edward Cox to come over and be the fourth. Um, the conversation was obviously quite um, enlightening, but the thing that um, I think really shows through with my grandmother was that later in the evening, when she started getting tired, she said, "Mr. President, if you don't mind, would you ask somebody to call the cab? And I think it's time for me to go back to our hotel room." He said, "Athley." I will take you back to your hotel. And he did. After President, um, and under President um, Nixon, she was appointed to the um, preservation of the White House. She served under President Ford. Was, at this time, she was actually um, nominated for an ambassadorship to Luxembourg. Unfortunately, she was in Switzerland. She fell and broke her back. And so she, was, she never obviously became the ambassador. She actually broke her back on three separate occasions. This is a woman who had incredible determination. I love this picture because the first two you can understand. The third one is, why is she shaking hands with Jimmy Carter? <laughs> well, that's because she was the only one on the preservation of the White House Committee that was retained by President Carter. And in 1987, she was awarded the highest award that we give at the University of California, which is the gold medal. She was instrumental in the founding of the medical school at the University of California, Irvine. She also um, was um, supporters of Chapman, USC, Pepperdine, and Loyola. This is um, Dr. Walter Henry. He was the dean at the time. And then probably one of her best friends was Dr. Howard House. This is actually one of the last photographs that we have of her. And Dr. House was a, um, the gentleman who founded the House Institute in Los Angeles. And he kind of had a crush on our grandmother and was constantly <laughs> begging, Athlete, would you please marry me? And she was so astute, she said, Howard, I think we should just remain friends because if we get married, all that money from all those other widows is going to dry up. <laughs> well, then, as Jeff mentioned, um, my mother and my grandmother were instrumental in founding the National Water Research um, um, Institute. And so, in 1994, the Clark Prize was established. The book you see was a um, tribute to our grandmother. This was a um, show we put together. It actually went to um, three presidential libraries on tour. We have our first um, recipient. Obviously, Bruce Ripman is here. Um, Ron, uh, Ron Linsky. Um, I think that's my younger brother. <laughs> and of course, my mother, Aunt Pierce Swan. This picture I love. I mean, this says, if you, if for those of you who knew who Ron was, this was Ron. And then, of course, my mother. 
And then my mother really got a kick out of this because, first of all, a woman got the prize. Plus, she had the same name. <laughs> you have to understand, um, my mother always kind of bucked the system. In the 1960s, the press club of Orange County awarded her the Man of the Year Award. <laughs> then we have some additional um, pictures of the recipients over the years. And then after Ron passed away, we inherited Jeff. <laughs> My mother wasn't quite so sure about this, but <laughs> she obviously recognized that um, Jeff had great talent, and of course, he's done a wonderful job since then. More pictures of the recipients, and then our last year's picture. I want to leave you with one final thing, and that's a quote that my grandmother said, and she was interesting from the standpoint she could be extremely serious, she could also engage you. Matter of fact, her favorite thing was to call you up and say, dear, I'd like you to come over and have lunch. Well, you know there was a project coming. And of course, by the time you got done with lunch, you were the one who had the idea. But she also said, let's have some fun along the way, for that can be a cure for a great many things. Thank you for your attention.